Well, hello, everybody. Welcome in once again to another edition of Get to Know the Royals right here on the YouTube page for the Queen Sports Network. As always, I'm Mike Glennon. And today we welcome to the program for the first time, but back to the softball program for a second time, Associate Head Coach Christine Roser Lefevers and Coach. Thanks again so much for taking some time uh, to talk a little bit about your story and, of course, uh, taking some time away from a busy schedule in the summer for you. Yes, no, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Well, we talked about it, this being your second stint uh, here at Queens. You just couldn't get enough of being a Royal, it seems. Is uh, You spent four seasons before here assisting Queens um, in making those three consecutive South Atlantic Conference Tournament Championship appearances. Uh, had that unbelievable season back in 2018. Uh, but, you know, can you talk a little bit about your previous time here and, you know, coming back to, uh, you know, as coaching staff with Coach Schramm, uh, I know she said that it's kind of uh, was a void that you left when you left the program that only you could help in return. So what do you say to something like that? I mean, it's a huge compliment, especially coming from her. You know, she <clears throat> is a phenomenal coach and mentor and friend, and we obviously have kept in touch, and I'm just so excited to be back. But, yeah, those four years were amazing. They were a great learning opportunity for me. Um, we had incredible talent, great leadership. It, it was a lot of fun, and – Obviously, building a culture and building that championship program took a couple of years, but it was actually quicker than I thought. <laughs> well, you know, you guys had some academic All-Americans, some All-SAC players, uh, and then we talked about it. 2018, you get a program history uh, in th with 35 wins, and you get your first ever national ranking. Can you take us back to that 2018 season? And I know you just talked about a little bit in terms of that culmination of trying to put something together and build something here at Queens and, you know, kind of what that meant to you guys. And then obviously what it meant to your career personally. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I, I base a lot of my coaching stuff off of my playing career and that yeah. level of expectation and that standard of excellence. Sure. Um, you know, we won conference three years at, or four years technically um, and went to regional, you know, so there was that sure. standard of excellence that I kind of have kept with me as a coach. So when I got to Queens and as, as an assistant, that was still with me. And I, I knew that the girls, we had the talent, we had the leadership. It was just a matter of getting all the puzzle pieces together um unfortunately we didn't go as far as we wanted with the talent we had we had some injuries that came up late yeah. um it was a, quite an interesting regionals we had a young lady that was on the field hockey team that actually stepped in to catch for us oh really our starting catcher was out our starting first baseman starting right oh. catcher, second baseman i mean all of our big hitters were kind of out and mm. so it would have been fun to see what that team was able to do sure. with everyone healthy, but nonetheless, it was still a historic season and, you yeah. know, a lot of fun to be around. Well, you know, and it's not like uh, catching is the easiest position to step into, especially uh, coming off the field hockey field, that's for sure. Right? Her first time ever playing collegiate softball and it oh. was NCAA regionals, the biggest stage. <laughs> Trial by fire, you know? <laughs> I guess I guess if you're going to do it, might as well just hop right into it, right? It's a bit, uh, right? Can you talk about your relationship with Coach Schramm? And obviously you guys are very close. Can you just kind of talk about how that's helped you in your career? Um, and then obviously what has ultimately led you back here is now the associate head coach here of the softball team. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, she, like I said, has been a phenomenal mentor and friend. And I've learned so much from her and grown tremendously in my coaching career and how I approach things and just the feedback. I mean, it, it's amazing. So I jumped at the opportunity, obviously, to come back and mm -hmm. be able to work alongside her and hopefully get the program back to where we were in 2018 and just hit the ground running. Yeah, absolutely. And I know, you know, obviously this year with everything that went on, of course, last season ending abruptly and then not very much time at all to prepare. And of course, you felt that on the head coaching side of things yourself uh, at Mars Hill and, you know, where, where you were, have been the last couple of seasons. And you know, can you talk a little bit about taking over that head coaching role and especially in a time like this, which, you know, your, your first experience into a solo head coaching role is uh, right as COVID strikes into it. So, you know, can you talk a little bit about the kind of the obstacles you've, over, you've seen yourself overcome and how you've learned? Yeah, I mean, if I can be a head coach during the pandemic and during all that, I, everything else seems to be pretty easy. Sure. Um, but no, I mean, it, it was insane. It was definitely crazy. My first year, 
was 2020 up at Mars Hill, and that was the year the pandemic hit. So we just got done playing. We were getting ready to gear up, and everything got shut down. And mm. everyone obviously was at a loss of what this meant for how long. Sure. And I mean, I think it definitely for me and the players, it helps you not take things for granted. You know, mm -hmm. you, you just had your season ripped away, and those seniors and the devastation, and yeah. you know them not coming back, and then. 2021 the season was shortened and there was all sorts of protocol that we had to go through mm -hmm. and phases and masks and getting tested every week I mean so jokingly but on a serious note like it was probably the most difficult two years coaching um, aside from wins and losses and sure. I think from here on out hopefully things get back to normal um, it, it'll be easy <laughs> yeah Actually, yeah, what, whatever normal is nowadays. But uh, no, I agree with you. And, and, you know, and that's, of course, the encouraging thing heading into the fall here um, is, you know, you guys will probably be able to get that fall ball back and, you know, being able to work out and just be together as a team. And I know talking to all of the coaches here at Queens throughout these, this last season, uh, and I'm sure it was very similar no matter what school you're at, was just the, the inability of of the amount, I should say, the lack of time for teams to come together and really be a team uh, because you guys are separated all over the country and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, as a head coach, how did you combat that? Yeah, it was hard. I mean, for us, culture is really important for me, especially, mm -hmm. you know, I want that family dynamic amongst our team. Sure. And it was hard because we couldn't do like team meals. We couldn't do team outings. We couldn't do... So we got creative and did some things outside. We would do Zoom calls a lot. I know everyone loves a good Zoom call. <laughs> of course. Um, so we, we still found a way. And then obviously when things evened out a little bit, we were around each other playing some more. But no, I agree. I think the fall, it was really difficult. I mean, I brought in 15 new people last season. Wow. So we didn't even get a fall to see hey, what can these kids do? Can they, where can they play? What, how can we work these kinks out? Um, so we were doing a lot of that in our early games in February and, you know, January scrimmaging each other. But sure, it was, it was rough. It was definitely not your typical season. But I will say I'm so proud of the girls and the team at Mars Hill because they all mm. came together in spite of it, really. You know, they, sure. were, they were definitely like a family. So it was, it was a lot of fun to be around them. Um, and I'm looking forward to, you know, finally being able to be around the Queens girls in the fall. Sure. Absolutely. And, you know, it, that's, that's one thing that stood out to me, no matter who I've talked to, no matter who I've seen, um, is just kind of the resiliency, especially at this age for these kids that, to have that sort of resiliency and just like, well, it is what it is, but we want to play. So we got to do what we got to do. Um, obviously that's going to help better suit them in life as they move on. Cause they're going to have to deal with challenges, maybe not to this extent, but at least to some extent, they're going to have to deal with that. And I'm sure that was a, a proud moment for you as a coach to kind of see them uh, just usher themselves through that. Absolutely. I mean, you hit the nail on the head. It is what it is. What are you going to, I mean, yeah. complain about it or are you going to figure out <laughs> what you have to do? And, you know, the biggest thing that we kept preaching was that we're getting the opportunity to play again, you know, yes. and you never know if, you're going to get shut down. I mean, we had four weeks left in our season and we had a positive test and mm. contact tracing. We got shut down for two weeks and then had to come back, you know? So yeah. it was kind of a, don't take anything for granted. Go out there, give it your all, play hard, sure. be, be good people, be good humans to one another, have some compassion and some grace and mm -hmm. let's, let's be grateful for the opportunity that we're getting. And correct me if I'm wrong, but it, one of the first couple of games back from that layoff was actually here against Queens at the Tuck, because uh, I know I remember talking to you a little bit about that when you guys came to town. So, uh, yeah, I just challenges galore. But, uh, hey, you know, it helps, I guess, build you as a coach. And, you know, you had mentioned a little while ago your playing days and kind of how you've taken some stuff from that. And that's always something I'm interested in. And looking at your playing career, you had a successful one. You mentioned it, a three, but – uh, you know, four times conference champions. Well, I don't want to slight that, but you were the 2009, 2011 um, Diamond Catcher of the Year, 2008 Freshman of the Year. The accolades just kind of roll up. Uh, you're an all first team All American through Dactronics and the Southeast Region Player of the Year. You know, what is it you loved and you learned in college, and especially now as a coach that you look back to say, yeah, I want to use that to make these young ladies better. Yeah, I mean, we, like you said, I mean, we were very successful. So it was a lot of fun. Winning's always fun, right? Um, <laughs> sure. 
but the girls on the team are what kind of helped that, you know, it was like I said, that standard of excellence and there's no cheating corners. There's no cutting corners. Mm -hmm. There's no doing things the easy way, or let's see what I can get away with or any of that. Like we knew every day that the work we were putting in and the extra work we were doing was Mm going to, in the end, help the team win and help us be the best we can be. So um, that and just the discipline that goes with being a college athlete and you know Mm -hmm. it's it's not easy it's definitely not easy but it's so worth it I mean I had three of my teammates in my wedding when I got married in October you know so that's that's amazing (laughs) you know but those those relationships are going to last you hopefully your whole life so these four years when they're collegiate athletes are so special so sure um, I just want to make sure that they're making the most of it and taking the opportunity and running with it. Absolutely. Well, you know, it's funny you bring that up. I had talked to Bree Martinez the other day on Inside the Lions Den, and that was one of the things that literally when I said former Queen softball player, she's like, ooh, that's the <laughs> first time I've heard it that way. That, that kind of stings a little bit. But at the same time, you know, you, you move on in, but she talked about it as well, making those lasting relationships and, and what that can do for you, not just on the field as a coach, but of course off the field just as a human being, uh, you mentioned three of your former teammates being at your wedding. I mean, that's that's such a cool story that you're able to find like-minded folks and, and you know be on such a level that you keep in contact like that. Yeah, absolutely. I know. For me, after I graduated, I actually helped out that year after, and I could okay. talk about like, <laughs> softball ending without crying. I was like, I gotcha. you no idea. Like you sure. need to take it for take every opportunity, like love everything you're doing. I know the 6 a.m. wait, like I, I was a mess. And it's like, you do lose like your identity. You're like, who am yeah. I without softball? So I think a lot of young ladies, a lot of athletes probably struggle with that after they graduate. Sure. Um, but I, I hope that the skills that they learn, you know, through the academic side, through the team building stuff, through the culture stuff, helps them grow as people even after graduation so they can better cope and deal with all that. Yeah. And, you know, forgive the cliche, but the blood, sweat and tears that you put into all of those years. And then, of course, for it to, you know, come to an abrupt end, I guess you could say it's just it's one of those things that um, I feel like once you start looking back on your playing years, though, you can take those lessons, you know, and say, OK, here's how I can apply it to the next phase in life and so on and so forth. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you know, looking ahead back to your time here at Queens, um, you guys have some great recruits coming in. Of course, you're on the recruiting trail all summer long. And then you guys have a great group of young women that are returning next season as well. And some that, you know, a couple of freshmen that really had to step into some roles that I don't think they were expecting to see in 2021, but they did it and they did it well. So, you know, how excited are you as a coach and what are you most excited for for this upcoming season? Yeah, I mean, it's funny. So I when we zoomed with the girls and like I got to see everyone again and you know I was so excited but I'm really excited about the girls that I so I think they were freshmen two years ago maybe yeah freshmen and haven't had the opportunity to work with and so I'm just excited about that and getting to see like even when we played when I was at Mars Hill and we played Queens last year and you know getting to see those freshmen step into those roles and in starting positions and primary positions you know I mean Mm -hmm. it was exciting so that's kind of something that you can't take away from them that experience that they got is amazing so I'm excited just that they have that level of experience now and they're only going to get better absolutely well you know where is it that you see yourself most you know helping to most improve this team. I know obviously a catcher by trade, uh, but at the same time, so many more aspects of the game beside that, especially coming in as an associate head coach, where are you looking to, to really help this team grow? Yeah. I mean, Stacy and I kind of work together on the defensive end of things, but all mm-hmm. primarily handle pitchers, catchers and hitting. Um, and I know hitting was kind of a weakness for them and sure pitching. So I'm I'm excited about that. I'm excited to get them back to a level that they deserve and that we expect. Sure. Well, you know, and that was one thing Coach Tram had told me all season long, uh, both, you know, on air and off air was just talking about how, man, if this team could just catch some consistency in terms of of, of hitting, this would be a scary team. And she's not lying. I mean, you know, when they hit the ball, they hit the ball hard. Um, It's just one of those things, especially coming into the collegiate game, always faster than, than coming out of high school. And for those that had came in, maybe not expecting to play that much, 
but and then only having a matter of weeks to get ready to play at that kind of caliber level, uh, that's tough. And especially in the conference you guys play in, and you know this from the Mars Hill side of things, there's a lot of really good teams out there, both pitching, hitting, catching, whatever it is. And so you just kind of have to get out there and see what you're made of and, and, and kind of get set. And it sounds like you guys are really excited about the prospect of being able to have that preparation going into this year. Yeah, I mean, especially Queens was the only team in the conference last year that didn't have a fall at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, we didn't play games in the fall, but we were still able to practice and do all that stuff. So, I mean, they even, to go through that and Mm -hmm. the the hurdles that they had, they still probably did better than some would have expected. Um, But no, it's awesome for our conference. It's awesome for regionals how strong the conference has gotten even first year at Queens I mean there was a clear divide between the top and the bottom Mm -hmm. and now it's really like anyone can be anyone on any given day I mean look at the conference tournament Tusculum upsetting Lincoln Memorial and running away with it um Julie always does a good job over at Tusculum but I think everyone kind of thought LMU was going to be the clear favorite and yeah you know Tusculum had other plans I mean, LMU was, what, top seven the entire season pretty much. And so all of a sudden, it, like you said, though, you know, it's that old adage that when you hit the postseason, it's a brand new season. And uh, you just have to att- approach it that way. And obviously, Tuscan did a fantastic job. And who knows? Maybe that's Queens next year doing the same thing uh, to a couple of ranked teams. And I know you guys are excited to do that. So, you know, last question I have for you is just kind of, if you can just tell the folks at home, just kind of what the feeling is like to be back in a place that you love and knows that loves you in return just as much. Well, that's what, so I've been walking around campus and seeing some familiar faces and I'm just like elated with joy and pride and, you know, being able to like show campus off to recruits and just, I'm I'm proud. I'm so proud to represent Queens and like the people that are there, the, the love, the support, the Mm -hmm. standard. I mean, it's just, it's an unbelievable feeling and I'm, I'm so happy to be able to be back. Well, I can promise you one thing. Uh, we are happy to have you back. I know Coach Shram and the players are happy to have you back as well. So uh, welcome back to the Queens family. And, of course, uh, best of luck coming up here this season. We'll be talking to you guys as the season approaches and all. But good luck in the fall and, of course, just getting together as a team and just kind of, uh, you know, melding together. So when you hit the diamond for that first time in the spring, you're ready to go. Yes, thank you so much. All right, that's going to do it for us here for another Get to Know the Royals right here on the YouTube page for the Queen Sports Network. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button so you can get all the newest content. Check out queensathletics.com as well for all that and then some. For Coach uh, Christine Roser Lefevers, we appreciate you joining us. As always, I'm Mike Glennon. Go out there and enjoy the rest of your summer, folks. And as always, go Royals.